University of Milano is hosting this workshop um, as a uh, as a head of, of the Department of Philosophy. I go to a lot of workshops in which I bring the uh, welcome of the philosophy department and mainly there are workshops about which I know nothing and uh, 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 with a topic that sometimes is very far from what I do and this is not the case, in this case I'm sort of welcoming you and uh, <coughs> it's a topic that is very close to my heart and so uh, so, for, for this reason, it's a, it's a very a warm welcome that I want to give you. Um, let me say uh, one thing, this workshop is part of a, a human-animal uh, project. Um, you see that uh, from the posters that were around the university, that there are uh, several partners participating in this project, in particular, uh, the project is made possible by the funding of the uh, Human and Animal Institute and uh, Human Society University branch. Uh, and uh, as part of this project, uh, as some of you are students, uh, uh, there is a, a, a scholarship that we will award uh, in the fall for a student to write a project for uh, a tesi di laurea magistrale, the main thesis, uh, on the topic of human-animal relation. And so this workshop is part of this project. We will have another uh, event next year. And as some of you know, uh, there are courses that are related to uh, the project that were um, taught uh, during the first semester and the second semester. And so people who taught the courses here, or in fact, uh, so if you have a chance to hear what they have to say. So I'm, uh, I introduced the, our first speaker, uh, Gianfranco Mormino, um, uh, with a talk, uh, okay, the title is uh, <laughs> Stifling Empathy, How We Learn and Teach Not to Respect All Living Beings. paper uh, deals with the problem of uh, empathy uh, from a very particular point of view. That is, uh, it's often said uh, that empathy is something uh, inborn, something you either have or do not have, that it cannot be learned, that it cannot be taught, that empathy is a sort of natural and um, unexplicable or explicable only through uh, physiology, through neurosciences and so on, a sort of quality which does not really depend on uh, uh, circumstances, on uh, society, on education and so on. So, in many cases, in many debates about animalism, I have heard the argument, well, empathy cannot be a very good way to spread the animalist, the animalist view because empathy is something uh, uh, which is uh, somehow unchangeable and so on. So, uh, I, am, I completely disagree with this idea. I think that empathy can be learned, can be taught, that uh, it depends on education, on social influence, that it is something which of course has its uh, basis on, in our physiology, in our uh, in, in the way our mind is built, uh, starting from, of course, the neurological, the neurological uh, constitution of our mind. But uh, I think that is a very evident, uh, a very clear evidence that say, that empathy, in both senses, both in the meaning of feeling, uh, of course, a good a compassion and good sense and good feelings, and in the meaning of feeling. Uh, uh, different uh, uh, feelings, that is uh, uh, hate or, or uh, contempt or uh, whatever. I think that in both, uh, in both uh, 
cases, uh, empathy is strongly dependent on uh, social aspects and uh, in particular I think that it depends on uh, education and uh, on the particular, uh, particular uh, way uh, uh, which, uh, is, uh, which builds our being, which builds our, uh, our um, psychology, which is mimesis, imitation. That is uh, the, uh, the theory, the mythic theory, the theory uh, upon which I intend to uh, build my, uh, my, my claims. So, when I say that empathy is strongly dependent on circumstances, on culture, it, that it depends on many factors which are uh, perfectly, uh, which depends on, on, on interrelationships, I think that this uh, can be proved very easily. Mm, how do we explain that uh, the dead body of a man, of a girl, uh, floating in the sea uh, does, not, uh, uh, does not cause any reaction, any em emotional reaction when we know that uh, it comes from Libya and uh, on the contrary if we think that this, uh, this, this, this body is the body of a person who falls off from a tourist uh, boat uh, it raises a great emotional uh, feeling on uh, those who know it. Not, not make, first, luckily, not all of us think this, but it is very common to see, to see how empathy can change in time. For example, uh, political propaganda political, can uh, stifle empathy, can uh, suppress empathy towards a particular uh, ethnic group. Uh, and uh, it is, in general, in my opinion, very, uh, very obvious that empathy has degrees, first of all, and that uh, these degrees are continuously changing in our life. That is, we are not uh, as empathetic toward that particular object uh, the way we are maybe yesterday, and uh, maybe tomorrow it will be still different. That is, not only empathy is uh, very, uh, may have a very different uh, uh, degrees in different persons and uh, referring to different doctors, but also the same person has a very different degrees, no matter what are the biological, the neurological basis uh, which explain or which, uh, on which empathy is grounded. So, I take that uh, uh, empathy is a, a social, uh, a social uh, aspect and that it is built uh, in uh, our relationship with the others and uh, I think in particular that since empathy uh, seems to be uh, fundamental for the uh, existence of every living being because every newborn needs to be empathetic at least toward a few reference uh, being a mother or a different one needs to be empathetic because it needs to build a relationship, a bond with other beings in order to stay alive, in order to survive. I think that empathy is, from this point of view, something which our education, our growth tends more to stifle, to suppress than to, than to, 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 to encourage. And uh, so, uh, there are many, many, many philosophers who have uh, pointed out the fact that uh, the life in society seems to be a sort of uh, uh, great effort to extinguish empathy in men. Uh, Rousseau is a very, very important one, but also Spinoza and other, other, uh, other thinkers have uh, observed that our education has a, a sort of uh, uh, hidden goal that is uh, of uh, making us feel the others as uh, rivals, making us feel uh, uh, look at the others as uh, potential competitors, and therefore to try to uh, uh, abstain ourselves from a real uh, participation in their feelings and try to get. Uh, uh, from them. So, uh, I, be 
begin this, uh, this, uh, this paper by observing, by remarking that uh, uh, empathy is coessential with identification. Identification is a, a very fundamental aspect of the life of a, of a child and uh, identification is uh, uh, the same as empathy, that is, the, the ones with which we identify, and it is necessary for us to identify with someone, the identification with someone implies a sort of mind reading. We identify with someone with which we try to, uh, to, 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 to establish a bond, uh, which allows us to uh, answer to, to respond in a, in a correct and appropriate way to uh, the, uh, the stimulus we receive from it, from him or her. So identification seems to be a very fundamental and uh, necessary for survival aspect of the life of the of the child. Uh, according to Freud, this is the first, the very first. Uh, uh, manifestation of an emotional bond with another person. And this identification, as already Freud uh, remarked, uh, is, uh, uh, implies uh, the effort of the new one, of the, of, of, of the, of the newborn, to uh, <coughs> imitate the model, to take the one with which we identify as a model and to try to be like him or like her. So, identification needs empathy and identification and empathy imply mimesis. Mimesis, that is, uh, uh, not only trying to be like uh, uh, the other is, but also, that is, uh, imitating the speech, gestures and everything the other does and but also trying to imitate his and this is the, 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 the what Girard and what the mimetic theory says also imitating what the other desires what the other wants it is what is the object of the actions of the model so we have to distinguish very well that is, the child distinguishes very well from between two sorts of beings. There are the beings who are models and uh, with, whom, with whom we would like uh, uh, to, to, to establish a relation of uh, equality, to be like them. <coughs> and there are the objects, that is, the things, uh, whatever uh, is the object by which or through which we tend to be like the model. So, uh, uh, this uh, differentiation, I think, is uh, very important because uh, it implies that in our desires, in our, uh, in general, in our actions, we are moved towards the models and not towards the object. This is the paradoxical aspect because uh, we uh, seem to want to desire determinate objects only in order to be like the one, the model, who has them, who desires them. That is, desire is not properly a desire for the object, but it is a desire which through the object tends to make us like the one, the model, whom we have chosen. Could, can be the mother, the father, a friend, or whatever, or uh, in advertising, uh, uh, a star uh, on the screen. So, in uh, this, uh, uh, in education, in education, uh, as many philosophers have already noted, the attitude which is, uh, uh, towards which we push, towards which the parents push the child is to have better models, to have good models. Spinoza says in a very, very uh, illuminating pages on education, he says that uh, envy and honor are the, uh, the, the 
the goals toward which or through which are the, the means through which the parents try to uh, make the child grow. And the end on, that is, in education, even maybe without awareness, the parents try to incite the child to be, to end for to, to end another one which is posed as a who is posed as a model, that is to be like him, and to try to obtain, to gain the approval. So honor, honor is a word which we do not use so much in modern life, but approval or uh, agreement or applause and so on is uh, the, the, the same. So, and the end of education seems to be a sort of selective process in this view. Education seems to be a selective process through which the child's attitude of empathy toward a large uh, range of a wide range of models is canalized, is channeled towards particular particular models which are defined, socially defined, as prestigious, as the most important ones, and discarding, thus discarding other models. Because what is it? Microphone went off, I think. Okay. Sorry. So now it's better? No. Okay. Sorry. So um, the, uh, the child, as uh, recent studies on imitation in children as have uh, shown, uh, can uh, imitate and can empathize with almost everything. There are very common experiences which are confirmed by studies on the field. Non si sente adesso. Non si sente. Adesso sì. Okay. Devo proprio parlare così. D'accordo. Così è meglio ancora. <laughs> Scusatemi. Sorry. So, it's very, uh, it's a very common experience to know that, to see that a child can uh, attribute, can empathize uh, not only with uh, his uh, brother and with or with uh, his pet, uh, but even with the dog, with inanimate beings. So the, in the life of children, empathy can be directed almost toward any kind of model. The, the, ex, the, ex, the experiments which have been uh, shown by, which have been described by, reported by Merz of Show, for example, that how, in a particular situation, the child identifying with the doll which is preferred because the mother directs her gaze towards the doll and not towards the child, the child can feel uh, jealousy and other feelings and uh, attribute to the doll happiness and uh, uh, sort of, uh, any sort of feeling. So, it's common in the life of children to empathize and to take as models even inanimate beings. The division of species does not exist for the child. The child can attribute a feeling and can feel the same way as, uh, uh, any, as an animal, as a non-human animal and even as a thing. So it's very common for the child to try to identify with the whole world surrounding him or her. So, education, even without a, an exact awareness on this point by the parents and by the educators in general, seems to be a sort of selection. That is, in education, I think, what the parents try to do is to narrow the models with which the child needs to identify, to indicate, to show which models are the good ones to follow and which others, which other beings are just means through which you can become like your model. 
So, in this uh, view of education, which I will uh, correct uh, in a few points in, uh, in a few minutes, uh, in this view of education, I think that uh, uh, even without uh, a, a particular intention, the world of the child is narrowed and it is by, through this process, that he learns that it's useless to feel empathy toward this or that object. Because this or that object is only a means through which he can obtain his identification with the chosen model, which is not chosen by him, of course, but is, which is chosen by the uh, general uh, opinion of society and in particular of the family <coughs> in which he grows. So, if uh, we uh, try... I don't know how much time... Okay. So, uh, is in, this, uh, in this way of, uh, uh, of, of looking at uh, the process of uh, education, that is, through a selection uh, by which we uh, learn that uh, the dog is not a being for whom we must feel a feeling of empathy or any feeling at all and because it's just inanimate and by which we learn that there are many beings which are not models because we do not want the child to look, to be like them I think that in this process, not only the parents, the family, and so on, have their part. Because, and this is one fundamental aspect of the Girardian theory of mimesis, uh, the education is not simply what the parents or what the teacher tell to the child. It is a much more general uh, relationship between the uh, subject and the whole environment. Education is not uh, something which stops uh, when we are 3 or when we are 15 or 18. Because uh, education intended as imitation, that is as a, an effort to be like uh, a few others, this uh, is long as a uh, uh, our whole life, because in every moment of the life, even when we are very old, we can find someone with which, with whom we want to identify, because he possesses something which is, uh, according to us, is the reason, is the secret of uh, his, his happiness, of uh, his superiority toward us. We must remember an important fact that in education is uh, happens. Uh, in a situation of inferiority, that is, the child, of course, uh, has, is, uh, is pushed toward the imitation because he is continuously considered and uh, the parents make him feel as someone who is not yet uh, what he should be. So, his entire process of growth uh, is uh, a process of uh, trying to go upstairs, trying to go uh, toward something which is better than you. And this feeling of uh, uh, inferiority, which is uh, induced in the subject by way of uh, contempt, of uh, the region, of many other of, uh, uh, kind, uh, uh, kind ways of making him understand that he cannot yet do this and that, that is also by prohibitions and so on. This process is necessarily producing in him a sort of a reaction by which he thinks that the other, the model, is much happier than he is. So, okay, thank you. So, in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, this has been uh, explored very well by a few, a few researchers in mimetic theory. The, what uh, 
uh, is essential to the mimetic theory is that the subject in all his relationship with the other, with the others, is in a situation of inferiority or feels in a situation, feels himself in a situation of inferiority, which drives him toward an imitation toward the desire of being like another by having what the other has. But, and this here we come to animals, we, here we come to uh, the, 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 the topic of our conference. Um, in this uh, uh, psychological account of education and uh, of relationship with, from, with the, of the child with the world, it is very clear that empathy is only can create, can be exist only for the models. It is the models is the uh, being on which our psychological life is focused. We look at the model, trying to be like him or her, and the means through which we uh, try to be like him or her are exactly just means and are only, only, uh, uh, are perfectly replaceable. If the model changes his, uh, uh, his habits, for his fashion, for example, he has a different uh, way of being, a way of behaving, the, uh, the subject in looking at the model will ch change the subject of his own desire according to the change of the objects made by the model. So we follow uh, uh, the trend, we follow what uh, the model has uh, established as uh, fundamental, as uh, something which has prestige for us. So what about empathy and what about the animals? I think that in uh, we can uh, stifle empathy, that empathy is stifled in the education uh, which the parents and society uh, promote by uh, showing uh, uh, that the uh, only models which we should try to be alike are a particular kind of models. That is, that these models have something which is not the simple uh, beauty of a cat or, uh, or something like that. that the models which society um, considers as really prestigious are selected in a very particular way as uh, the ones which that society considers as uh, models of uh, uh, which uh, may improve our, our rank in society. So, a sort of uh, competitive education, in my opinion, is uh, the one which makes many subjects uh, to become simple means, simple objects of desire. This is not only animals, it is not only animals which are humiliated in everyday life by being eaten, by being uh, kept in cages and by being used as metaphors of ignorance of stupid, and so on. But it is also many other beings. No, no parent, no, no father or mother will ever maybe think that you must or give this message in an implicit way that you must be like the homeless, that you must be like a, a person who has failed in his career. So I think that the humiliation by which society marks a few beings as not worthy of being imitated is the way by which empathy is stifled. Okay, so in, to, to put it in, 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 in a more provocative way, what matters is not what, uh, exactly what the parents do or what society or, or, or what is uh, written in philosophy books. What is much more uh, important in this uh, process of stifling empathy, of destroying uh, the feeling that everything can be a model from which we, might, we may learn something, uh, I think that it is social praxis which determines, uh, 
which determines our choice of this model and consequently the definition that someone else is not a model, is just an object of desire and so he or she can become a, a someone for which we do not feel empathy. Even women can become, of course, mere objects if we think that the prestigious models are men having lots of women. So the objects of desire can become, women can become mere objects of desire and our empathy for what a woman, a woman feels can be stifled and woman can be, can be refined, can be considered an object. I think that social praxis comes first. It is that the fact that we eat animals is the reason why we do not feel empathy anymore for them. And not the opposite. I think that empathy is stifled by the social action by which animals are humiliated. They are eaten and so on. So, in a certain sense, I think that, and this is just to, 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 to end this in a provocative way, I think that the uh, maybe unaware ways by which uh, education stifles empathy in, uh, in a child and uh, makes uh, him uh, think of uh, animals and not only animals but also other uh, humans and so on, as mere objects uh, is very similar to the way which very successful uh, groups like uh, gangs or like the mafia uh, employs to stifle empathy in new adults. In, in, in new adults, it is what is um, which is the way by which you uh, become part of a, a criminal society. Uh, they, if you uh, commit a crime against a person you do not know, it is an initiation. It is a sort of ritual of initiation by which they try to uh, stifle your resistance, your empathy toward other beings by showing you that others have already done so, that everybody in the, in the group has already, for example, killed his victim. And by doing this, you accept to be, you try to be, you make an effort to be like the models which have been chosen for you. And I think that to stifle empathy is a sort, in, in, in common life, is a sort of ritual by which a child is, uh, uh, becomes an adult through the, the choice of particular models and through the suppression of empathy. I think that there is not a, a real, uh, as, I saw, as I said, as there is not a real awareness of this, but I think that when we direct, when we push uh, children toward the competitive models, I think that uh, we are, in that moment, we are sentencing to death uh, animals, so we are sentencing to, 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 to death and many other, uh, many other beings, that is, we are making them feel that the only the only, the only reason why he should live, the only goal he must tend to, is that model, which is socially accepted, and in general, no animal and no uh, and no poor human being is ever in this uh, in this situation. So, just to end, I would like to uh, to 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 to, to say. One more, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just to say this: so what is uh, uh, what? What, which, uh, what can we do in order to be aware of this? We must remember that non-conformism is the only way by which uh, we can try to uh, to, to, to not to be so, to be uh, overwhelmed by education. And there is a very famous quotation who says, uh, by a Latin poet, uh, who says, uh, the one who loves what the other discard, the others discard, is as strong as iron. So, non-conformism in this uh, meaning is the possibility of being, the capability of being able to refuse to terminate a particular social model 
by choosing minority models, by the models of a minority of people, as I think all vegetarians do, that is to choose different models and to be able to discard what education wants us to be alike in favor of a different, of a different model. But this requires a great amount of, uh, uh, of non-conformism, that is, in the mimetic theory, a less mimetic character, a less mimetic attitude, that is, the capability of resisting the voice which makes us uh, compete and go toward the, the same models, which, which should be, of course, which in society are the same for everybody. So, uh, to end, uh, uh, a non-conformistic uh, attitude is maybe the only way through which uh, an education can avoid stifling that empathy which uh, is uh, uh, built within the boy, within the child, sorry, within the child, and uh, which is necessary for his uh, growth. Okay, thank you very much.